Hi, this is Chaz Palminteri, and if you're thinking about getting your eyes done, the only person to see is Dr. Rothman of LASIK of Nevada. I flew all the way from New York to be here, and Dr. Rothman did my eyes. And all I could say is, it's a miracle. I could see. You see Dr. Rothman of LASIK of Nevada. If you have a car and you live in Las Vegas and you're out driving around on a Friday night, have I got an announcement for you. Meanwhile, this is the Living in Las Vegas podcast, episode number 110. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada. That groovy little podcast that gives you a true first-person look into what it's like to call Sin City your home. The Living in Las Vegas Podcast! (laughs) And now your host, a man who clearly needs some kind of introduction, otherwise you wouldn't know who he was, Mr. Scott Whitney. People are watching for the first time and are like, what's wrong with this guy? I think he's gone clinically insane. That comes from Kevin Meany. He's a comedian. Yes, he he is a comedian. That's correct. Uh, Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living in Las Vegas podcast. I am, in fact, your humble host, Scott Whitney, and this is the world's greatest place to be. In Las Vegas. Kumbaya, my lord. Great to have everybody here. Um, but I'm not alone. I'm not doing this alone. People think I do because of all the work that I do compared to the, the co-host. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the look. It's the look of love. She wants me dead. You know what? No, no, she doesn't. She's my naughty, jolly, sweet. She was my nurse today, kind of. Wouldn't you say? Why? Don't I- talk yet. You haven't been introduced. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a great show. No, it's not Not going to be that great. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I bring to you Melissa Whitney. There she is. Always the wrong sound effect. Yeah, why is that? Why, why when always you get those introduce two... me, do you also try to shoot me? I, Should I be worried? No, I sometimes get those two mixed up. I just, I find do it to be... Do you think it's Freudian? Uh, Dr. Freud. Dr. Freud. Wee! No, I don't think it's Dr. <laughs> Freud. I mean, I don't think it's Freudian. I think it's... Uh, I just, well, it was a doctor. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of things to push here, and uh, I, I sometimes understand. get confused. Uh, anyways, uh, some quick it's Las Vegas... It's hard to be you, isn't it? And it is. Mm-hmm. Some quick Living in Las Vegas stuff. This is the Living in Las Vegas podcast. Our website is livinginlv.com. It's livinginlv.com. Of course, you can go to the big <gasps> network website, vegasvideonetwork.com or vegasvideonetwork.com. Or if you're like Melissa, you'll say vegasvideonetwork.com, just like she says, umbrella. Say umbrella for for everybody umbrella no 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 say it like you normally say it umbrella you say umbrella that's umbrella. what you, you say umbrella right you don't know exactly where the accent is umbrella. It's, sweet. it's a little sweet thing uh you can call our new and improved listener line 206-312-0105 or of course you can send your emails to a variety of places i don't know where would you like to send them how about this place Ba-ba-da-da! on air queue at living in lv.com again on air queue at livinginlv.com, talk, uh, tip of the hat whoosh, to LASIK of Nevada and Dr. Rothman, who uh, is a good man, Charlie Brown, and uh, is a big supporter of the Vegas Video Network. Today's weather, uh, better 92 degrees. This weather this weekend has been completely nuts. We don't even know what's going on here. Uh, but you know what's really crazy is our pool temperature, because today's pool temperature is 84 degrees. <laughs> Why is that, babe? Well. Eh, that's what Why don't you share? Mm. Come to find out, if you have a four hundred thousand <laughs> BTU heater uh, and you turn it on, it heats the pool to eighty four degrees. It does a really great that's job. That's a good job. Four degrees an hour is how how fast that heats the pool. 
What's what's even yeah. better is if you leave it on and you never turn it off, it continues to heat the pool every day thereafter. For 24 hours a day. Well, not 24 hours a day. We oh, don't yeah, heat the it pool. goes off when the thing it goes does, off. Yes. But for the so last, how many um, hours do you think that was? Well, running? it's been on since Saturday. Mm. And then Sunday, which we didn't use it at all, but no. and that pool was warm. Today- We could have. We could have. Monday was a good day to go swimming. Not really. But it was hot in case somebody wanted to go swimming. Just and today, in Tuesday, it, today's temperature was good, 90 degrees, 92 degrees. And it was, again, one more time, 84 degrees. Were you just feeling generous or what? I Yeah. The, the good people at NV Energy have, uh, they send me cards every weekend. Thank you again for keeping the company afloat. You're welcome. Uh, so today's That's tip. The, the second time we've done that. Today's tip, if you have a pool, and more importantly, if you have a heater, turn it off if you're not going to use it. That's my tip for the day. Hmm, I think uh, that's very helpful. I think that'll be the end of the big show. We're going to change what? it from Goodbye. living in Las Vegas to pool tips from Scott. <laughs> turn the freaking heater off. Click. That's all you got to do. It's a button, people. Uh, Vegas Video Net- Network News. Some big, 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 boogity 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 big news. Syndication partnership news, ladies and gentlemen. Are you excited? I'm super excited. This is, uh, first of all, a big, a big tip of the hat to the one and the only Dennis Silvers, Woo! who's the host of uh, Golf and Other Four Letter Words for uh, making this, start making this stuff happen. It's pretty very groovy. Pretty very groovy. Pretty pretty very groovy, which is new you words. You haven't even had one single drink of your wine yet. I think pretty pretty very groovy could be a t-shirt, quite frankly, and ah. it's the one that I'm selling now. Cool. Anyways, we uh, have a syndication partnership with AM 1400 KSHP, which is a big deal. So all of them, every single one of our programs, all eight of our shows, uh, starting on, uh, actually, I didn't put down the date down. That's mm. pretty silly. Excuse me, middle of June. Yeah, last week of June, I think it was. Oh, last week of June. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Everybody. It, uh, actually, it's the middle of right. June 17th. So Friday, June 17th, we become a uh, full-blown syndication partner with uh, AM 1400, KSHP. Uh, And get this, Friday nights from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, is all the Vegas Video Network. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really cool. So it is the station, so, cool. so the st- that station, the entire from six to ten, is basically playing all the audio from the sh- the Vegas Video right. Network. So shows. we take all the audio that we've got here, and uh, we send it over to the radio station, and they take it all that, and they're going to bundle it. And we've got we've talked about the order of the shows, and I don't have that written down right now, but. All of our shows are going to be ordered in such a manner as to, so they kind of work together because there are some shows that are somewhat related and some that are a little bit off kilter, like for example, ours. And uh, we're going to put that all those shows uh, in the six o'clock to 10 o'clock slot. So if you're driving around Las Vegas from six to 10 in your car, you can listen to the Vegas Video Network. That's really cool. It's going to be called Vegas Video Network Friday Night Features is the name of that block. Yep. And uh, so they've asked me to... um, uh, record a 30 second promo, which should be fun. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I, I don't know like what it, I don't know what I'm going to say, but they asked me to uh, record a promo, so I will do so. Uh, yeah, Jackie is actually making some comments about the uh, swearing, <laughs> which we sometimes do. Um, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna stop that. <laughs> well, not I'm really. really, really, really gonna try. We're yeah, because mostly it's, it's Melissa doing most of the swearing on this. Particular I'm really show. gonna try. I'm trying to do it. It's looking a little too exposed. I know. You kind of got a Guido thing What's going on. What's going on with that? I'm looking got, like you're I'm kind of like showing off the. Oh, that's not good either. You no. should wear a t shirt under there. Oh, no, stop it. Anyways. Um, I think you and I need to do a clothing check. Uh, anyways. <laughs> you know what? Oh, you just wiped me off. I wish I was more in the middle of that shot. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I, I don't like that. that. Hold on. This is bothering me. Can't have it. No, I can, I can see why you feel that way. Did yeah. I accidentally knock that? You probably did. I bet. Um, but, uh, I tried to turn it more on me. So Well, as it should. So again, Friday nights, beginning on the 17th of June, 6 to 10. In answer to Jackie, who's uh, on the live chat, yes, we're going to change the swearing protocol a bit. Uh, the truth is, we've already I've already talked to the guy who runs the show there, and, uh, and Brett tells me, you know, look, you can't say the seven bad words, and, and we don't normally say them, although we sometimes say them. But in the event we do say, I'm, I'm just going to dip that word out. I'm not going to bleep it. So it's not going to be, I'll go beep yourself. It'll be, I'll go yourself. 
And uh, so it's not quite as. But we're gonna try to be good. But we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell all the uh, uh, all the hosts that we're gonna need to be cautious of that because it was a big deal to get all eight shows on there. So it I'm is a big I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty jazzed about that. Uh, so congratulations to mm, me. You. <laughs> and, and the to Vegas the host, that was a big deal. And again, thanks to Dennis Silvers for uh, making that introduction. He is a freaking monster when it comes out to uh, shaking hands and kissing babies. Uh, also on the news, uh, I mentioned in the uh, in the Facebook that I had a little minor surgery today. Don't worry, everybody, I'm okay. Don't worry. I know that I can see that. Oh, the chat is just blowing Nurse up. Night- People Nightingale are like, "Scott, are you okay? You all right? Oh man, I hope you're okay." Funny, actually, nobody is saying that. Uh, you just told them. Give the, them a minute. The chat, Wait till they see your photo. The chat is like. Uh, I think we should have actually taken a, a picture of your your wound. I did, and I didn't and? get it. Unfortunately, I had the doctor take a picture of the the surgery spot while it was still open. Oh, uh, well, that's uh, just nasty. And uh, it didn't uh, didn't get here in time. Let me double check that to make sure I'm not lying to you. Brand. Uh, uh, I, I think the one you have is disgusting enough, actually. Yeah, no, uh, didn't get that. Nope. Uh, but so um, I, I had a, a little minor surgery, had a, a cyst removed from my, just underneath my rib cage. And uh, it was really pretty cool. The, um, well, not so cool, but uh, I talked to a guy, or I worked with a guy named Dr. Fife at the surgical dermatology place. It's down in the southwest area of, uh, of the Vegas Valley. He had a busy office. Yeah, he's 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 kind of the go-to guy. Actually, what I was was like a walk in the park for this guy. So his his real practice is focused on uh, cancer removal and reconstructive surgery. So it's the big like stuff. Skin cancer, yeah, or yeah. like breast cancer. Or? I think it's mostly skin cancer. He's a dermatology guy, um, but um, so he's not a plastic surgeon. Well, he does plastic surgery, I think, as reconstructive. I, I guess he does. Oh, interesting. Um, but uh, he's like the go-to guy. I was referred to him by my uh, the dermatologist who I go see every year just to get the little you know skin crap off me. Um, but uh, so I went in there a couple of weeks ago and said, "Hey, I've got this these cysts," and he's like, "Yep, I yep, I got those. I have two of them." He goes, "Well, one of them you can just kind of leave alone if it's not bothering you." Because it is real surgery, and you can bleed, and you know bad things can take place. So he goes, "I wouldn't mess with the one that's been there for a while." He goes, "But this one, if it hurts, and, you know, and how they doctors press on things, does that hurt?" Yeah, hell yes, it hurts. And you want to punch him in the nose? Don't because you? we could take that one out. I said, "Okay, we'll, we'll take that one out." So I like when the today. dentist does that. Oh yes, your partner yeah. poking me with a sh- yes. sharp little yeah, picky stop, thing. Stop the sharp picky thing. I don't care for. <laughs> um, so I uh, went in there today, and uh, you know that's why I wore this shirt because it just buttoned open. And, uh, Did so you have to put a little gown on? He, they asked me that. Was, would you like to wear a gown? I'm like, why would I wear a gown? Like, can I just undo my shirt? He goes, yeah, sure, absolutely. So, okay. So went in there. You didn't and, have to take it off? No, I had the shirt open this the whole time. What if it started gushing blood? Well, then I'd probably use it to soap up the <laughs> blood. <laughs> Gross. Well, it's funny. So they, you know, they, so it's right below, it's like right here. Did they put a big gauzy thing on there? Yeah, you want to see it? Well, no, no, let's not. See? Oh, they, they can't see it. Right there. Oh. That's well, not bad. I can show that. Yes, yeah, so still leave that for two on yeah. there for a couple of days. Right. So um so they so I go in there and they like, okay, well do you want to take wear a gown? No, not really. And uh okay, so uh lean back, we're gonna give you some shots to numb the area. It's a local, I wasn't wasn't put to sleep or anything, because I don't like that. So pretty much anything that has to do with surgery, my first question is, do I have to go to sleep? Yes, then no. I mean, I had I had ulnar surgery on my arm, which is a pretty major surgery here and here, and I was awake the whole time. Now you know someday you might have to be put. Well, you know when you get like a dog, you get a colonoscopy. Yes, I know. I am not. But it's not. It's you know, it's not the kind of sleep like where they put an an oxygen mask over your thing. It's more like it's more like a date rape drug for colonoscopy. It's it's more like a very heavy sleep sedative. Are you conscious during that? Um. No. Maya was, says that she got not. put out for her colonoscopy. Um, but there's but, different um, kinds of anesthesia. So it's not like the kind where you're like, breathe right. deeply. You know what I mean? They just put stuff in I've your I've never IV. had a breathe deep. I've had a couple of surgeries. I've never had that. It's always been, It's always been a shot. I mean, uh, you know, an IV. It's in the, yeah, that's what they do. It kind of looks, yeah. like, it kind of looks like a milky Twilight. substance. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so they gave me this. I tell you, the most painful part of this whole this whole event 
is the shots they give you to numb the, the area in the first shots? place. Unbelievable. You know, shot, 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 and then they go, poke, 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 and does this hurt? Yes. So they poke a little bit deeper and give me more shots. So that wasn't very pleasant. But the gal is, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure, a surgical assistant or whatever her title was. She's very, very nice and, and did all that. And they came in and went to do the uh, the surgery. And I asked him, so, you know, what is, you know, what's your expectation here? And so he goes, well, I think it's um, about, he said it in centimeters. I think it's probably going to be about that big. Like a ping pong ball, we Yeah, decided. a little bit bigger than a ping pong ball or so. Because I thought it was, you know, X size the first time. But I think it's a little bit bigger and I think it's deeper. I think it's about one centimeter deep um, or one centimeter deep. So I'm like, okay. And this is just below my rib cage. So they uh, they went, you know, they did it, and and so I'm laying down, and I'm Wait, like, were you watching? Well, so because were you laying flat or were you slightly elevated? I was elevated? slightly elevated, just slightly. So I said to the doctor, I said, "Hey, is there a chance I could see what you're doing down there?" He you goes, wanted to watch? No, no, no. I said, "Is there a chance?" As in, if there is a chance, me no wani. You don't want. to I don't want to see that stuff. Ah. So he goes, well, it's kind of below the rib cage. I said, well, can we put something up there? Can we make like a tent or something? <laughs> like can't. a dam? Like he a... goes, well, we've got this sheet that we're going to put over you, so you're not like going to really see. Like you're having a C-section. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. So he, we took, we took one of those, you know, uh, whatever, like a cloth. You know, those, oh, seriously? You, know those, you know those blue cloths that they have, or yeah, blue yeah, paper yeah. they have. Yes. And so, he, so he handed me one, and I made a tent. <laughs> Like this? You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. And I laid it on my chest like that, so I couldn't see below my chest. Why did she just not look? Well, because, you know, you can't yeah, All help. you had to do is close your eyeballs. Well, you know. and I did a little bit of that. I did a little closing and talking. But I'm a, I'm a chatty Kathy, so I kind of wanted to talk to him, you know, how things going? What are you seeing in there? Anybody? Any bugs? I mean, you know, what's, what's happening down there? So, so he, you know, he starts, he starts doing the, the surgery, and, you know, you don't feel anything. And any and, and I mean literally you don't feel anything. So he's he made what I assume was the incision. He's like, was he cutting you like a steak? No, I don't. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know. I wasn't watching. <laughs> like little sawing motions. I don't know. No, he didn't do a little sawing motions, <laughs> Doctor Frankenstein. But um, uh, so he he you know he makes the the incision, but I really didn't see a thing. And uh, Maya's like, but you can hear everything. No, I didn't really hear him going. <laughs> it wasn't you know. a chainsaw. No, and he goes he goes oh that's nice. I'm like what. Oh. He goes, well, I thought it was going to be, you know, a centimeter down. It's only about about a quarter or a half a centimeter. I'm like, well, you know, I'm helpful. <laughs> when you get cysts, you get good cysts. I got good cysts. And uh, he goes, and it's actually trying to, you know, pop his little head out right now. I'm like, really? <laughs> I said, okay. Wait, he that's goes, how I described it? Kind of. He goes, so that's good too. I'm like, well, there you go. So, you know, he's doing his stuff and we're just talking about, he goes, so what do you do? I said, well, I'm an internet broadcaster. What, what does that mean? Well, I have a network. As a matter of fact, we'll be talking about this tonight. <laughs> Hi, doctor. It's really because we'll all have to watch that. That'd be great. So, Doctor Five, hey. Uh, so he he pulls it out, and uh, he goes, "Well, that was that was easy." You know, he. So, t- so it, I asked him, did it "Just did, does he just pluck it out, or well, does he have so, to cut it so out?" Or if this may this may make some people queasy. So here it comes. You go, basically, it's it, there's fibers. Because I asked him, "How does it stay in there? What makes it there? You know, what feeds it and what what gets it there?" I actually asked him, "How do people get those?" And he said, you know, that's a great mystery. No one really knows where they come from. Huh. Uh, he goes, but they kind of sit in this pocket, and there's like a fibery kind of thing. I said, well, how do you get it out of there? Do you have to cut it out? He goes, no, actually, I've got really dull scissors that kind of just push this, the, the fibers away from the, from the cyst. I'm like, well, that seems like it. He goes, but sometimes, you know, he goes, this, yours was the easiest I've ever had. And so I asked huh. him at the beginning, how long is this going to take? He goes, well, it could be 15 minutes, it could go to a half hour, depends on how not deep, in there very long. how deep and how connected it is. He goes, well, I've had people who were, you know, hour to get something like this out. He goes, he goes, this was easy. I'm like, well, again, you know, we try to serve here at the Vegas Video Network. How interesting. So he pulls it out and he goes, okay, uh, do you want to see it? Hell yeah. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like, actually, I had thought about you <laughs> when, she, when yes, he asked. I'm so very do you want to see it? I said, well, uh, Are you gonna yeah. Are there? Yeah, so oh. he, he showed it to me, he, pulled, he showed it to me, you know, and I said, okay, cool. I said, could I take a picture of that? He's like, oh, absolutely. So we did. So I'm going to show a picture of this <laughs> thing now. Can I take now. it home in a baggie? So <laughs> if, if you're squeamish, you're going to want to turn away, but this is the thing that was in my body. There it is. Gross, Ew. isn't it? Yikes. It okay. looks like a big fat, cluster, it's like, it's like, like a fat, fat on, on a, on a So stick. it was about that big. So it was smaller than he expected. 
It looks like a shrimp. Yes, it was. <laughs> Jackie. It does look like a shrimp. Let me see that again. Because of the, it does you know what of, I mean? Because oh of the God. veins Burr. in it. Anyways. It looks like it had a blood it, supply. It's not, first of all, they aren't veins. They're just, it's they? just, it's just, you know. Why is it red? Well, it's, it's in my body, for God's sake. Well, yeah, but okay. It looks like. Anyway, so it came out nice and easy. It was no big deal. Yes, uh, Maya is better. It looks more grizzly than anything else. And uh, and so they're going to take it to the it looks like to a lab and make sure it's all, you know, all that kind of stuff. But so he they didn't think it was anything, right? So in answer to the question, how many stitches? Uh, there are both stitches on the inside to to close up the the hole that is now there, you know, the space that's yeah. now been left as a result of removing that thing. Uh, and I think he said seven or eight, and then there's about a one inch, a little bit, a little bit bigger than a one inch scar. That uh, I think he said it was seven or eight. Is just, that was weird when he was stitching me up because I could kind of feel him tugging a little bit. Hey, that's yeah, so, so gross. It's not, not a rodeo. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. You've got me, Doc. I'm down. I'm down. You've got me. Three legs. I'm down. I'm not. I didn't actually say that. I was like, please just don't hurt me. Uh, so, but he was actually was really good. Very, very nice guy. Super fun. Uh, and very, very, like I said, to me, I, I think I was just a, a, a kid. I mean, I mean, a well, joke. It was no big deal for him. I have those uh, little cysts that I get on my head. I might right. go. I don't know who to go to, so maybe I'll go see him. I think he's the guy. So we're gonna start. They're very, in, you know, they're very interesting. So. <laughs> People in the chat are like, uh, "Remember, this is going to go on radio." <laughs> well, this one won't because uh, we've got a little ways to go. But I think that'd make good radio, didn't you? <laughs> no, I who wouldn't want to know about this? Right, one. so that's it. And I was telling him, I said, I had one on my chest, you know, like 20 years ago, at, I think it was Kaiser, and it was about the size, a little bit bigger than a ten, or tennis ball. It was, no, it was bigger than a, almost the size of a golf ball. And when they cut it, they didn't, it was, they had a hard time getting it out, so they're like <laughs> standing on my chest, pushing on it to get the pop out. I'm like, what the <laughs> Hello. People do it. That's probably not the right technique to remove a cyst. You, <laughs> you got really cyst, but you got a broken rib. Right, it was broken nuts. Broken sternum or whatever. So, uh, so again, this guy, this guy was great, super nice guy, and uh, I would say, uh, boink, to- You want to know what's nice? What's that? I didn't tell you this. What's that? So, you know, I was sitting in the waiting room. Yeah. And my own business, I didn't go to the counter with you, right? Right. So I just went in. I was sitting down because we didn't know if you would be crying, you know, have a sedative, and not be able to drive. We didn't. I didn't really know what to expect. Right. So, right. so I'm sitting there, and then this um, this helper bee staff uh, lady comes out, really super nice, and she said, "Is has anyone helped you?" And I said. Uh, oh no no no! I said I'm I'm here with my husband Scott Whitney. She goes, oh well, I saw you sitting out here, and I knew I hadn't helped you, so I wanted to make sure that you didn't need so you know to talk to someone. I'm like, I thought that was really nice. Very good. Oh, they're all very nice. I have been to several doctor's appointments, right. you know, with yeah. with you or whatever, you know, like a good wife does. And excuse me, nobody's ever done that. No, right. I mean, that, I thought she was really paying attention. So if Doctor Five is watching. His uh, front desk staff uh, deserves some kudos. And Brian wants to know why he didn't come in and watch. Uh, I would have liked to have actually, have actually. Oh, that was the thing they asked me. I do have a gore factor. So they asked me if I wanted to take a picture of the actual wound, and I said yes. So they took a they took a took a picture of the actual opened. With your surgery. camera, no. With their no, camera. with their they have a you know super duper special camera, right? And they were going to try to get it to, the email to me, and I was going to try to show it to you all, but. Um, Probably it's best that I didn't receive that email. It's probably best. Well, I wanted to come back because I but... probably would have fainted right here on the air. Oh, but I I don't know that they would have. We didn't ask if I could come back, but I would have no. liked to have. I, they probably would have allowed it. Uh, my you my think guess. So? I think they probably would have. I I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, when in doubt, go to Doctor Five to get your things removed from your things. <laughs> Wait till they hear that on KSHB, baby. Yeah, like, you tell oh, them, baby. I think this has turned into a rock station. Are those our uh, nice. emails over they there? Are. Yeah. How do you like the wine? It's um, uh, it's Chilean wine, and uh, I'm not sure about it. Is it? Yes. Uh, so this is the listener email section of the big show, and the way it works is if a man sends an email our way, or hell, a boy for that matter, uh, I'll take I'll take a crack at reading that. If it's a female, uh, Melissa will read it. Uh, we've got two emails today, both of which come from men. Mm. 
Men, men, men. Come on, ladies. Men, men. Come on, ladies. Get into it. Uh, we'll start with Stuart. Stuart is uh, we're, uh, our hero. <laughs> uh, Stuart actually sent an email also to uh, Talk Tales that will be featured next week on that show. Uh, but Stuart writes uh, a plea. Oh. Hmm. Uh, hi, guys. I have a plea. I love your review of Zoomanity. By the way, he's the only one. I got more crap for saying that I like Zoomanity better than Absence. I mean, like Al Mancini of uh, Top of the Food Chain, he thought I was you know, clinically insane because I like Zoomanity better than, than Absence. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, it's corporate. Corporate? It's beautiful. I loved it. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I stand by my review. I like Zoomanity. And even the, the, <laughs> the good and plenty... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can say nipples. Actually, I actually have an email to the uh, general manager saying, what can we say? Um, I loved your review of Zumanity, not one of the Cirque shows I would have considered before. So, good people at Cirque, you may thank me if you'd like. Uh, but now it's on my list. It's a public service. May I plead you to go see Believe and report back on that as well. I've heard... Oh, uh, I've given it a wide berth so far and have nothing. I've heard nothing but negative reviews, but also hear that it has changed significantly since it started. Huh? I have nothing. Uh, I know nothing of Chris Angel. Uh, he hasn't really been, he's from the, uh, I'm sorry, Stuart is from the UK. Uh, so he comes with no baggage or whatever about this guy. I generally like magic shows, so I'm tempted, but feel it'd be a public duty to all your loyal listeners for us to get your considered hmm. take on that. Consider take. That sounds like Nicely a challenge. Well so while you wait on these chilly Las Vegas evenings at the Whitney Villa pool to reach its workable temperature, 95 degrees, it's 85, uh, <laughs> why not go see his show? And by the way, he ranked Cirque du Soleil. So this is interesting. Uh, so I'm going to have you rank Cirque du Soleil, and we'll see if it matches uh, Stewart's rank. And then I will tell you that his ranking is about, uh, I think it's about where I am, too. So, what's your number one ranked Cirque du Soleil show? To remind you of the shows, there's Believe, which we can't rank. There is Zumanity. There's Ka. There's O. There's Mystere. There's Viva Vegas. And there is Love. Your number one ranked Cirque du Soleil show. Okay, can I qualify this? Sure, sure. It's your show. You can do whatever you want. I have been to see O many, many, many times. Right. So, um, you know, kind of lost a little bit of the luster. But I can remember the first time that I saw it, I was completely captivated. So I would say O is my number one. Okay. And I agree with, with uh, Stuart. His number one ranking is Ka. Mm-hmm. He says it has a story, it has spectacle, and it has the most amazing hand puppet show he's ever seen. Um, I actually like the stage, and the, actually the story didn't really get me. I just thought it was freaking amazing. Call would be my number three. Really? Well, who's number two? I would pick Love. And so number two for him would have been my number two, which is O. Oh. Now, when I first saw O oh, before I saw Ka, I thought O oh, was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. But after the third time, I actually started to get a little tired of O. Oh. Well, yeah, uh, but you, have, you can't base it because hey, most people- your own Please, for the hey, love of it, God. What's yours is mine. Only um, if we get divorced. You can't base it on um, three, seeing it three or four times. You have to base it on. But my first time I saw Ka versus the first time I saw O, Ka. Okay. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Uh, he, he says the theater itself is breathtaking, which it mm-hmm. is. I give it high ranks for technical difficulty of the show I agree and the with staging. That. I agree with and that. the use of water and fire is very cool. Uh, your number three was what? You said it would was be Ka. was Ka. And you said Love was number two for you. Mm-hmm. His number three is Mystere. Mm-hmm. And a traditional good uh, uh, Cirque. That's the first one that I saw uh, here in Las Vegas. I would agree with that. That would be nine, number four. And I, the reason why I pick a three is because it is, to me, the quintessential Cirque du Soleil show. Where did you, have you said love yet? No. So his number four is love. What now, a, number four. Is love this far down on your well, list? Well, it's, it's just so weird because I told you before, when I saw love for the first time and the only time, I came out of there feeling kind of crappy. Um, and part of it was because I thought these guys did such an amazing job with the music that I felt like I needed to, you know, get my game up. So I, really, I was affected you were, by that. You liked that show. I did. But, but from a Cirque perspective, I liked the flyy kind of amazing-y stuff. Um, and, and love doesn't have a lot of that. It's mostly just really well choreographed with Beatles music. Plus I'm not a big Beatles fan. That music oftentimes creeps me out. So, uh, I think that it lowers down. I mean, it was a stunning show, but as I look back and compare it, 
I mean, I could easily see how Love could be somebody's favorite show. Easy. Mm -hmm. Could easily see that. I could see how Ka O Love, I could see how any of these could be uh, their favorite show. And as he said, good music, good sound system, but the staging of the songs I found a bit distracting from enjoying the music. Interesting. And his number five was Viva Elvis. He obviously didn't read Zumanity. And he said, not really a Cirque show, just more like an Elvis sing-along, and he, he thought it was dull. And we had, I had said that I thought it, it was the most un Cirque show I'd ever seen. It was basically that same show could, within a month's time, be playing on any stage anywhere on, in the casino, in any casino. I mean, it could be at the Flamingo, it could be anywhere. It's just a regular, regular stage. It wasn't the, I, I, the way I, a stage works. I like Zumanity better than I liked Elvis. I like Zumanity much better than I like Elvis. I probably like Zumanity better than, at the end of the day, probably better than Love. Are you crazy? Mm -mm. I just liked it. I just kind of oh, no liked way. it. You, I think were, I you, you came out so affected by Love yeah, but, but, because it moved you. Yeah, but it made me kind of sad. I don't want to be sad. It made show. you sad because you thought they did such a good job and you wanted well, to. Well, it might have also you, been the music too, though. You wanted to, to do work as good as that. Well, so, that's true. I mean, that's a, a real compliment. You weren't, you weren't sad like whatever. That's crappy. You were sad because you saw that as uh, uh, something to achieve. To, to some extent. But some of it also is just that music is a little creepy to me. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Actually, not sad. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel sad. I felt like I was off off kilter. I'm bit. just saying, when you came out of there, you were talking about you know how you know what you wanted to do because you're a very creative person, right? And that's what you discussed. You so didn't anyways, come out of there talking about. So Stuart, we will see if we can't <laughs> check out Believe. You don't want me talking more? No, I do, but only if you agree with me. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> you married the wrong person. I'm not kidding. Clearly. And next up, we have a an email from Will. And Will says, hello, Scott and Melissa, in the correct order. I have been contemplating retirement in Las Vegas and have been searching blog sites for opinions, helpful tips, and ideas, and have found that most comments and beliefs are that Las Vegas is not the place to move to. As I don't enjoy gambling or any of the more addictive, negative <laughs> experiences uh, oh, I'm sorry. The more addictive, negative behaviors that seems to pervade Las Vegas. I don't understand why Vegas has such a negative reaction to most people who have or are living there now. When Vegas has been in such a positive experience to you, you know what's your feedback? Vegas hopeful will. Well, I think that it depends on the age of the people who are come here. So we we had somebody, I had a friend of mine who lived here before we moved here. And uh, and she left right when we came here. She moved right when we moved here. Now, it could be because of us. Could be. I don't think that is, though. Probably I think not. it's because she had a hard time making friends. And so I think, you know, we, I was thinking about this email quite a bit. You know, the, many of the friends that we have here in Las Vegas today are a result of this podcast. Yes. As a matter of fact, the vast majority, I'd argue, well, close to 80, 90 percent. I, mean, I can only think of two people who are our friends, there's probably more, who are not a result of this podcast, Jan and Don. Well, I have people from work. That's true. Uh, and, and that might be the other thing, because she didn't have, a, she wasn't working at a, a Las Vegas company. I think she might have been remote. That might have been part she of it as well. She was working from home. Yeah. So it, it is a somewhat transient place. Um, I will say this. The level of professionalism on a business perspective in Las Vegas is the worst I've ever seen, period. There's no question about that. I have talked to many, many people here uh, at variety of levels, you know, executive, middle management, individual contributors, worker bees, entrepreneurs, uh, and the overall level of professionalism here is not the same as what you might see in the Bay Area. Well, you know, yeah, but can I just say that y no. you have, uh, you know developed a lot of relationships with business people here that you have a lot of respect for. I, I have. And I mean, that's not to say everyone. I mean, you've had some really great experiences. Uh, no, there's no question. But like, you know, Ted just wrote just now, this town is so crap on professionalism. Uh, and, and it's true. It's really pretty, pretty uh, predominant here that a large number of people, they would never have these jobs if they were in uh, any other city. It's just true. Um, and uh, But nonetheless, you have to deal with them. And so there is that. So from a business perspective, that can be a little difficult. On the other hand, you know, I've met I, pretty much everybody I run into in my in my world 
for the most part, are entrepreneurs or solopreneurs or people out there kind of trying to hunt themselves. And so I have a certain affinity, obviously, for those kind of folks. So I really like those kind of people and, we, and I get along real well. But as overall, I mean, we've dealt with some people who have really been very unprofessional. So if you're in that world, that can be kind of a negative. But from a – and if you're trying to meet people, like see, I'm not the young age guy trying to meet you know, a girlfriend. So I don't know if that's easy or hard. I mean, I have no sense for that. Um, I think it could be easy, but I could also see where it could be very superficial because there's a lot of that superficial vibe on the Strip. The truth is most people who live in Las Vegas and who don't work on the Strip – don't go to the strip. They don't. They don't like it. It's too busy. It's it's too expensive. All of which is true, uh, but they don't. They don't tend to want to deal with that. But here's the deal: my mom retired here. I mean, she retired elsewhere, but we eventually moved her here, um, and not just because we live here, but because the weather is outstanding. The cost of living is amazing here. Um, I mean, when we moved to Cal- from here from California, we got a house that was 60% the size and 40% the cost. Now, it's 60% larger and 40% the cost. Now, that's everything has changed. It's all kind of upside down now. But the median price for a house here is $135,000. And if you watch Getting Real Estate in Vegas... You know, we've done a tour around the the Bay Area, or the Bay Area, the Las Vegas Valley, and showing you what $135,000 will buy you in the Southwest, in the West, in the Northwest, and now in the East. And there's some pretty good houses, some houses with pools for $135,000. So you, the bang for the buck right now is unbelievable. I know J, uh, Jacob and Sally are looking at a house now. Unbelievable. I mean, so these, what you can buy here is unbelievable. So the cost of living here is great. If you are retiring here, uh, which I'm not, but my mom has, there are three communities here that are dedicated, that are age-restricted communities. There's Sun City, Las, or Sun City Summerlin, Sun City uh, uh, Alante, Aliante, and uh, uh, Henderson, which is called Anthem. Anthem. And uh, my mom lives in, this, in the Summerlin one. They've got a, a, a magazine that comes out every, what, month? That's this thick, full of things to do. So if you're looking for things to do when you're retired, I mean, you can't not do these things unless you simply don't want to leave the house. But there's plenty of do, plenty to do. There's pretty good um, medical facilities are getting better and better as well. I mean, there's some great hospitals, you know, on the on the west side of the of the uh, the valley. I don't know about the east side, but on the west side, great. I have bumped into some really good doctors. My cardiologist, he's a freaking genius. Love the guy. The guy who did that, who we talked about today, love the guy. So there are some great doctors here too. So, you know, I think part of it has to do with the the Sin City thing about Las Vegas, you know, the gambling and the drinking and, and that kind of deal. Um, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to, you know, you can just stay away from there. You know, what do you think? Oh. That was a pretty good one, didn't you think? I, think? I felt like I had a lot to say there. It's the Scott Whitney show today. I think Was that, that nice, by the way, what you just said there? Well, I, was, nice? I was taking it all in what you were saying. Huh. I, for me personally, I think it's your state of mind, honestly. I think it all comes down to that. You know, if you're the person that comes in here and is saying, you know, I'm going to move to this new place. I'm really going to enjoy all that it has to offer and I'm going to get out there. I'm going to, you know, engage. And I don't mean like the drinking and the gambling, but, you know, we just took some friends of ours who are in town this weekend out to the um, Red Rock, you know, um, uh, nature center and they were talking about how they were impressed they were with it you know these are you know there are lots of things like that that have absolutely nothing to do with gaming springs preserve you right. know we're building the smith center so for me i i really think that people that come here um and don't enjoy it often it's because in my opinion their state of mind they're not putting themselves sort of in the position to enjoy it. And I, I I, think some people, you know, maybe have a hard time moving away from family. I think there are a lot of people that retire and mm. move away from their kind of family base. Right. Um, but if you don't move here with the thought that you're going to, you're going to invest in your community. And by that, I don't mean money, but invest time to it and to get involved in things, then, you know, I guess you're going to not probably have that sense of community. Right. So that, that, that's what I would say, you know, and there are other senior communities here other than Sun City. Right. Um, you know, there are quite a few and the good things if you're retiring, if you move to one of these communities, they have so many groups that you can join yep. 
that I think it would be almost impossible not to have a sense of community. So for me, I think people that come here, if, if they're having a trouble with the, you know, the, the gambling and the drinking or whatever, they probably have an addictive personality and probably could have uh, similar issues where they live. Um, and again, if they're not feeling the sense of community, kind of right. shame on them because there's enough opportunity to, uh, right. to create that for them. A themselves. lot of people don't like the weather because it is, it's freaking hot here in the summer. But well, we your like mother, that. Oh my God. Your mom is the biggest, you know, kind of weather, you know, she's very kind of particular about weather and right. her climate. And she moved here from um, uh, Washington State. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, Anacortes, Anacortes, which is this little, you know, it's an island in the middle of Puget Sound. Beautiful, Wet, you know, cold. really kind of moderate weather, you know, rains kind of overcast. But, right. you know, it's not snowing or anything. But she was very unhappy about the weather. Second year. Mm. And now she's like, you know, Las Vegas is kind of the ideal place for weather. You know, I'm not saying that she thinks it's perfect all the time, right. but now that she has been here, you know, if you're moving here from Maine or Chicago or, right. you know, it, it, you know, give it a year or so to acclimate. It is right. a little bit different. If your mom can get used to it, though, for God's sake, then anybody can. Any she likes the weather here now. And that's it. Stop. <laughs> that was weird. I love doing that. I always do that. Anyways, that's my that's my two cents. So I thanks think. thanks to uh, to Will and to Stuart for sending those emails out, and that's very very cool. Again, if you want to do that, whether you're watching us on uh, AM, uh, what if I wasn't done? Or I thought you were done. Were you not done? I don't know. Felt like you kind of cut me off. You said you were done. I don't know. Oh man, really? Are you going with this today? Really today? I've been I've had, I've had surgery. Like you were going and on you're, and on, you're and then I wanted to have a little chat, and you cut me off. Oh, I thought you said you were done. It sounded like you were done. So if you even if you basically you said even if even if your mom can like it, then anybody can like it. Well, please please continue on. No, oh, that's it. That's right. That's what I figured. And uh, that's well. Yeah, what, what if I wasn't? That's well, what then I'm saying. I you kind of moved on kind of quickly. Uh, I'm sorry. You thought it was a natural pause, and you cut me off. I'm sorry, Jeez Louise. These people are like, what the hell? Did they agree? No, no one agrees with you. Scott is interesting to listen to. No, that's not what it says. Scott is not interested in listening to Melissa. <laughs> that's, that's not right, See, Jackie. even they notice. Nah, she's just, she's just kidding. Uh, anyways, that was me. Oh, and by the way, there was a good point. Uh, one of the great things about living here, Ted mentioned, is that you can stop into the Vegas Video Network studios and see what's going on, which is probably okay. the highlight of all people living which in Las fun. Vegas. So this weekend was a debauchery type of weekend. We're going to cover a few things. Not everything, but we're going to cover a few things that we did this weekend because it was a lot of good, fun stuff. It was. It was. We had uh, some good friends coming in from, uh, so we had some adult time, if you will, with uh, some of our Bay Area friends. I'm going to let you say it because you didn't get enough chance to talk during the email portion of the show. Please tell who they are. <laughs> um, our friends Shannon and Darcy and Brandon came right. to visit. Oh, and anybody else? No. Good. So, uh, so the first night, so Friday night, uh, Shannon came out, and uh, we thought we'd uh, kind of show her around a little bit. Been a we while did. since yeah. she'd been here. She's been here a couple of years. She said. So we we headed out to uh, downtown, and uh, stopped off. At, we had dinner at Chart House, and here's my tip. We're not going to go into a great de- detail about this. We've talked about Chart House before. So this is at Golden Nugget. Uh, this is in the new wing of the uh, of the building there that they've done there. But here's a tip, and we discovered it and thought, we're, we're going to do this forever. Yeah. And that is, the restaurant part is usually pretty busy, almost always busy. And if you say, I want to, you know, I'd like to have dinner for three, they're going to say, okay, you're going to have, have a wait. Boom, you have to go off to the bar. The bar is on, as you look at Chart House, the bar is on the right-hand side. It's a nice bar. Would you like to eat the bar? Sure. Let's do that. So we go to the bar thinking, okay, we're going to have to lean over and eat like we do with the Whitney Because it's, like a, <laughs> it's like a circular booth, and it has this right. low, like, coffee table. Exactly. So we figured, eh, it's okay. That's we'll also just, circular. Right, we'll sit down, and we'll do like we do uh, when we eat here. Yeah, we Whitney thought Bell. we would just go casual. But no, that's not what happens. This is why this is such a great tip. These bar tables, which are usually down, you know, at the hip level or wherever it is, they raise up. Say what? 
So they're at, they're at dining they're at dining height. How great is that? How simply great is best that? Best seat in the house, didn't you think? It's it is the best seat in the house. We had a nice booth, lots of room, lots of room. Because the their dining room up. is crowded. It's very crowded. Yes. And so you're right out. You're right where people are walking in. They're walking by the jewelry store. Brettling watches and some sort of place where you can buy, buy clothes, which we ended up in. Um, and then there's you know the new casino is off to the fish side. Tank there. They have a big, big fish giant tank fish tank. So you're it's it's perfect, and you've got the it waitress there. The waitress was really nice was and pleasant and helpful, and the and the service was and the quick. food was delicious. Great food there as always. So the tip is to have dinner in the bar in one of the uh, one booze. of the booths and just have them. Raise that dude up. Very, very cool. What time did we get down there? Do you remember? Was it like seven thirty? Uh, probably. Yeah, because I want to say we got we went down to Mama Don't Tell that uh, piano right, which we'll get to in a place. second because oh. you're miss skip ahead. So then uh, it was about actually it was a little bit later. It might have been about eight or nine when we finally got out of there. And I so think it was like nine. Yeah, so about nine. So we then we head down Fremont Street, and I haven't been on Fremont Street on a Friday during rush hour in a while. And it's interesting. We did a show. It's been probably a couple years now about street performers, uh, which really aren't performers. They just stand there. They they want you to take a picture with them. And so they're dressed up like, you know, Kiss or whatever. So we're we're walking down from the Golden Nugget to this Mama Don't Tell piano bar, which is in Fremont East. And uh, I can't tell you how many street performers there were. And I had heard people complaining they were about it. Everywhere. It was I almost felt like there were more street performers than um visitors. I felt there were too many. So I don't know if yeah, the, if this is regulated or not. I don't know what the ruling on that is. Uh but it probably should be. because uh, some of it was a little dicey. Now actually it was even later than that because we we're like, well, you know, kids probably shouldn't see this or kids probably shouldn't see that. But uh you know, are, why are you looking at my deck? Because you knocked my camera? And I no. went all shaky, or what happened? I knocked over the trash can. Well, that's nice. Look at that. <laughs> that's Sorry. Great. Crap all over the place. <laughs> uh, so, so for example, we see this cat, uh, who's quote a street uh, performer, and all no it is is a guy, a big old fat guy, wearing a sparkly bra and a mask on, with a drink in his hand and a bucket next to him, and that's. And he's a street performer. He wants you to you know, take your picture. Now, the rule is they can't ask for money. Um, but they want money naturally for the pictures. They want tips. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, well, that's that's not really all that great. Then we walked a little farther, and we saw this little number. It's blurry, incredibly inappropriate. So in my she opinion. she's almost naked. Yeah, I mean, she's wearing. You can see. You can kind of see. She's got the, the stockings on, and she's got little pasties. She was a very small breasted gal, so it really wasn't. But much. this but is really inappropriate. It's right in, in the middle in of Fremont yeah. Street. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, I know it, this is adult time, but it was. It was nine o'clock, and I don't yeah, know. Was, you know, you could still uh, have like a twelve, thirteen, fourteen year old down there, and yeah. I, I wouldn't want my son or daughter kind of being exposed to that. Honestly, yeah, I, I, think I, you're right. I don't think that's right. There probably should be. Cool. A, there should be a time. There probably. I, I would say that there should Midnight? be at, at ten o'clock or maybe ten. I mean, you shouldn't have thirteen year old kids running around at ten o'clock on the freaking Fremont Street, if you ask me. Uh, but sixteen, yeah. But you're sixteen, yeah. That's okay. Um, I think, but I think the um, there should be a time, I believe, for that kind of stuff. There was some gal who we debated whether she had real breasts or not. They were monstrous breasts um, that were basically fully exposed, po- exposed except for a couple of pasties. Um, but you know, it, but it's everywhere, and some of them are really kind of cheesy, and some of them are are better. Uh, but it's it really is too much. Down it irritated there now. me. Yeah, it's a bit too much with all the people down there and all these guys. So. Uh, I think Fremont Street needs to think this stuff through and decide how they're going to regulate this because it's too much. And you see it on the strip as well. But, man, I'm telling you what, on Fremont Street, it is. You can't not bump into somebody within four or five steps. There's somebody else who's who's doing this. They were this everywhere. Yeah, it, was, it was unbelievable. So we finally worked our way through that. And, uh, and we've talked about the Don't Tell Mama place. I just wanted to show a picture of it again. This is the inside of it. It's a pretty cool place. The, the, that chick can sing her butt off. Yeah, the the main premise of this particular Dre, ba- of this it's bar, really- it's a it's an open mic bar. It's not karaoke, so it's all it's a piano bar, open mic. Yeah. But but the majority of the people who sing are the bar staff who work there. So if you work there, whether you're a man or a woman, you have to be able to sing. 
But uh, they really want the audience to get up and sing. Yeah, and sing well. Now they're they. It's a little intimidating, my guess is, if you're an audience member, and actually, especially after listening to this gal sing, she can she can, sing. she can fucking boot it out, baby. So so you're not going to be wanting to go up after this gal and go, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and do a little. Uh, but everybody, when people wheel. did, they were, people were really <laughs> uh, supportive. I thought. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, um, so. And the piano player, this is a different piano player than we had seen last time. He's very, very good, sang great harmony. Um, I, I, the, only thing I, the only thing I don't like about this particular bar is that their tempo tends to be a little up and down. If you're a musician, you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, and they can smoke in there. So if you're sensitive yeah. to smoke, you know, we're, where we were sitting, it was almost everyone around us was smoking. So if you are sensitive to smoking... Yeah, you know, you're probably not gonna like this. Music. Yeah, and the, and the music is a little too up and down, one and three, one instead of they, they don't swing like I think they could. Well, that's because it's not planned out, right? So no, it's not. That's, that's just the people style. are putting in requests nah, for songs. That's not it. Actually, I think if they would have played it more like the music, it'd be easier for people to sing along. Uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more, boom, dong, 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 a little bit too much for my taste, but you know. It's a good place. The the cocktails I think are probably reasonably priced. The service is good. Yes. They they that you want a drink, boom. Absolutely. They get you a drink right away. Uh, we were able to get a good seat. The, it's interesting the 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 busyness of that place uh, ebbs and flows quite a bit. You would think a place like that would get filled and then just stay filled, but it doesn't. It ebbs and flows, and and why that is, I'm not really sure. Uh, but but in fact, it does do that. So we hung out there for, I don't know, about an hour or so and, and maybe a little bit longer. I had a couple of drinks and, and did some sing along with that kind of stuff. And then we headed over for the first time to um, uh, Insert Coins. Hadn't uh, hadn't seen that before. You know, we've heard about it. A lot of uh, folks on the, the network had seen it. Dave and Alicia had been there. I think I saw Al Mancini uh, talk about being there. So we thought we'd stop by and take a look at it. And uh, as a reminder for folks who haven't heard about it, it's, a, uh, it's a, the newest... Uh, bar kind of thing on Fremont East area, uh, put a lot of money into it. And basically the premise is it's got uh, uh, video games all around it, old, old video games, plus the newer ones are up on all the walls. You can get like bottle service where you have a booth and you have your own dedicated stuff. So it's, you know, it's a younger kid. I, uh, there's no question I was the oldest guy in there, um, but it was neat. Well, and, the uh, outside, on the outside is all the old arcade games. Right. And then at the bar, and then in these booths, they were all the uh, video console games. Right. So the Xbox, PS3, that kind of stuff. And you could pick whatever you wanted. It was, yeah. And, and if you were in the booth, you had like a 42-inch TV all to yourself. Two plus of them. this Plus this booth area. Right. It was very cool. Plus all the way around the bar, they had you know 42-inch screens, and you could be at the bar, which is in the middle. With your of, With controller. your little controller playing. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. And, and so we were in there hanging and around for a while. And they had a DJ and a dance right. area, lounge area, yep. too. And, and there was a lot of folks there. It was, it was busy. Pretty much everybody who could be somewhere was somewhere. Uh, Melissa and Shannon discovered their favorite game of all time, apparently, which is Centipede. And we kicked butt. And uh, there's the ladies uh, attacking little that was things. That so and... much fun. We, you, you missed it. Before you got there, when we first started playing, uh -huh. we were screaming our heads out. Was oh, that right? Yeah, you know, because the little the things come down, the little bombs, yeah, and, right. uh, and you know, the spider, and oh my God, we were just screaming our heads off. So there's Shannon uh, killing things, and, and, I, and I know they wanted to see this. They wanted to show their high scores. So Melissa is M-A-W there, which is the, what, third from the bottom, and Shannon is the the one on the bottom, the one next to the bottom, one just above any. But one of Shannon's scores was my score. Uh, No. Yeah, nope. it was. She just accidentally. Oh, is that right? Me. Yeah. Oh, really? So you both had two? Yeah. Oh, how about that? Look at you. I didn't know you had the skill set like that. Huh. You were shocked. You kept saying, "Wow, I'm what?" Yeah, I took a picture of the of their hands, and it was blurred. Like, <laughs> like I'm not, I don't think I didn't. You were I, surprised because I don't play video games. You don't. You're like, well, it's only a ball and a button, or I forget what is it you and said. And then we, funny. I can handle one button. It's like the controller where there's all the you know yeah, was, buttons it, all the way around the controller that. That puts me over the top. So that was that was our, our uh, Friday night, and then we uh, so we got home, and you know the next Saturday we picked up uh, Brandon and and Darcy, and uh, you know that was uh, a, that was going to be a pool day, and we were going to do it on Sunday, but Sunday was a crappy weather day, so we decided to do it on Saturday instead. So we had our pool day, and well, we knew that it might be crappy, and it was. 
Um, yeah, it was only 75 yeah, it was crappy. on Sunday. So Saturday became the pool day at the Whitneyville. And of course, if you're having a pool day at the Whitneyville, that must mean devil's margaritas. That's right. And so we, and actually a little bit of Bloody Marys because <laughs> Scott didn't need a little Bloody Mary to get the kind of thing rolling. So we had a couple Bloody Marys. By the way, uh, oh shit, what was that stuff? Tea, a Tabasco Bloody Mary drink Mix. was the favorite of the two that we tried. Uh, so we had our devil's margaritas. We hung around by the pool. And Brandon, who's uh, uh, online or was online, I think he bailed just recently, uh, got in a fight with the pool and uh, lost. Yeah, there was a pool incident. Mm-hmm. He bumped into the pool uh, with his nose. <laughs> and, uh, uh, took a little skin off there. We're like, Brandon, you all right? And Brandon, I introduced Brandon to Cap- or to uh, Sailor Jerry and Rum. And God bless Brandon, that boy can drink. <laughs> He uh, liked it. He, he, he doesn't, uh, he only knows. He doesn't know sip. He, he doesn't, knows drink. He doesn't know sip. So I'd be like, try this. He's like, that's real good. And I turn around and get mine on my, and he's like, have to. Like, we need a sippy hey, cup. Brandon, you gotta, you gotta you know, slow that Brandon stuff down, Brandon needs his own sippy cup. So he's, you know, he's drinking and he's pounding. And all of a sudden, while we're talking about that, all of a sudden they're like, you know, tattoos. Maybe we should get some tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll talk about that later. Come to find out. We did. So we decided to go. We're going to take him down for uh, a show and some dinner. So we uh, rented a limo. We rented a presidential limo. Uh, we've talked about the. I've talked about these guys for a long time. Look, if you're going to get a limo here, you know this is not an advertisement. This, let me just tell you, get presidential limo. They've got it completely figured out. You know the email alerts. Literally before the drive, when the driver leaves the place, they send you an email saying your driver has left. Here's his name. Here's his phone number in case you want to call him while he's on his way to pick you up. Which is really cool. It's unbelievable how great these guys are. So they came. They picked us up here at the Whitney Villa and drove us down. And we were having dinner at uh, Mastro's Ocean Club, which is at um, uh, the Crystal's Mall at City Center. But first, we went over to Cosmo. We wanted to show them the uh, the chandelier uh, uh, bar. So we hung out there for, I think, a drink or so. And uh, had a, another good bartender or a, another good waitress there. We were on the second level. That's right. And uh, then we walked on over to uh, Mastro's Ocean Club. Now, I've never been there before, but that's the place that looks like this. <coughs> oh, let's get you wake up. Wake up there, big fella. Come on now. Come on, little baby. Oh, I probably should have turned that on. Oh, come on. What's going on? All right, here we are. So you're not watching that. <laughs> it's uh, thinking. It's, I don't know why it's going. Anyway, so this is the place inside the mall. Inside Crystals. There we go. And it's sort of in the center of the mall. There we Are you going to show a picture? Yeah. It's this place that looks crazy. It has this kind of, you know, wooden outline tree looking thing in the middle of the mall. You look at it and go, well, what is that? Uh, well, I'll tell you what it is. It is one of the nicest restaurants we've ever eaten at here uh, since we've been here. It's a little weird that it's in the middle of a big, brightly lit mall. But the uh, I tell you what, everything there was I probably, I'd argue, the best that we've had for any restaurant we've ever been at. It was really well, impressive. Did you think the steak was the best I thought steak? the steak was outstanding. But did you think it was the best steak you I, ever I had? can't think of anything being better. Let's put it that way. So it, it starts was with gigantic. the service. It was, the service was outstanding. Older gentlemen wearing the white tux kind of look, you know. And it's all linen, all that good stuff. And It was a little brightly lit. That, we and, and that was the issue gorgeous. I had with the mall. That in and of itself, it was brightly right. lit. I would probably, you know, take the uh, those wooden slats and 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 maybe cover them with like glass or something so it could darken the place up. Um, so that was the only thing that I didn't really care about was it was pretty brightly lit. But uh, you know, little things. So for example, drinks. Drinks on this trip are always very expensive. So I ordered a a captain in diet. Uh, Brand, Brandon or, or a, I'm not a captain, a, a, a Sailor, Sailor Jerry. Jerry or Jerry and Diet, they call it. He had a, a Jerry and Coke and Shannon had a, a super dirty martini or whatever they call yeah. it. And what was really cool about this, you know, usually you'll get your drink and they'll charge you 15 bucks. And what they did for us, for, for instance, for the captain and Diet, they came in with a, you know, a glass that was basically three quarters filled with captain, uh, she, with Sailor Jerry and then they brought a separate little Coke bottle. So you could refill yourself many, many times. So it was, in essence, the equivalent easily of two drinks. Easily two drinks. And they did the same thing with the Bartini. 
They brought her out the martini. They told her, you know, here's the shaker. Be sure to keep your finger on it. They poured it in front of her and left the shaker there with her. So she had, I don't know, two or three wit refills right. during dinner. Another two or three drinks. It was really, really smart and nice. And the service was good. And the service was great. The food was great. All, just it was really impressive. The, now we three of us had the ribeye, and it right. was like, um, God, I can't remember how many ounces it was. Oh, uh, but uh, honestly, huge. It was huge. a ribeye would have been you enough. Could share it. Absolutely. Yeah, we we all pretty much ate half. In. It was bone in, and uh, right, Brandon right. got the ahi tuna. He said it was the best he he'd said, ever had, which he said was phenomenal. Right, and then uh, Darcy, she got the crab cakes and the chowder. Right, but she also said was good. So the, ever, the chowder, she thought the cream might have been a little too much, but for her. yeah, but she said it was delicious. Yeah, it was just it was really good. You know, had we been going home, we would have you know taken that stuff home, but we we are off to the strip, so we couldn't do that. Uh, but uh, very impressed, and, and we thought kind of reasonably priced. They had a priced. live singer there too. They had yeah. a live, like at a piano player piano and a singer Barcy, there. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the price, but when we got the the bill, I was surprised at how low it was. Now we've been drinking all day, so we didn't, you know, drink as much. We didn't have like. I a, think we just got one drink. Yeah, we didn't have like we normally like maybe a bottle for the table or whatever. But it was reasonably priced, and we all thought, well, there you go. But I think I think like the steak was fifty bucks. And that didn't that sound about right? I think that's right. Uh, 40 something. I mean, 47, I think, but that's almost. Yeah. So, so we hung out there for a while and then we walked over to, um, uh, to go check out the Brad Garrett comedy club and, uh, hung out there for a little while. And then now, Oh, at dinner, this is when the big, the big tattoo talk came up again. really came up again. And so, uh, two of our, of our guests, uh, of Shannon and, and Brandon really wanted a tattoo. Yep. Really wanted a tattoo. And they're like in it. They're like, okay, let's do it. And Darcy was kind of thinking about it, getting a frog with another tattoo. Uh, but she changed her mind. Uh, but Brandon and, and Shannon were like, we're getting tattoos, man. We're in it. Right. We're in it. Now, I thought I had Brandon convinced to get uh, that icon there of the Vegas Video Network logo tattooed. And for a while, he was saying yes. I thought we had him. Then I started feeling guilty. <laughs> Like, you know, I don't really want him to have this tattoo. It's his first tattoo, for God's sake. He goes, well, maybe I can put it on my tattoo off to the side. I'm like, oh, my God, what is wrong with you, Scott? You can't tell him to do that. You're evil. You're completely evil. So uh, I backed off of that. And then eventually he said, I'm not getting your tattoo. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and we debated whether I should get a tattoo. So I was thinking about it. And during, during uh, there was some time during Saturday where I'm like, you know what? I think I'll get a tattoo. I think it was actually at dinner. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I will get a tattoo. You, you were pretty gun hung And then by the time I got done with the comedy club, I'm like, mm, I don't think I'm going to get a tattoo right now. Uh, but God bless uh, Brandon and, and Shannon. They wanted to. So what was cool about this was we called up presidential limo. They were supposed to pick us up at 1 or 1.30 or whatever at Tropicana. We called them up and said, hey, how about uh, picking us up at 2.30? They were supposed to pick us up at 1. How about picking us up at 2.30 over at the Mirage? They're like, okay. So boop, one call, done. Uh, and by the way, uh, bad news if you're uh, in line for taxis that day because man, there were taxi lines everywhere. It was, it was unbelievable. When we got out, when we got out at the Mirage, uh, there was a guy out there stopping all the ta- taxis and asking them to go around to the front, and he was saying there were 200 people it was in un- line in the front of the Mirage because we got dropped off in the back by Jet Nightclub because right. we were going to um, King Inc to get these tattoos. Right, radio. So we said, okay, where you know where should we go for tattoos? I'm like, well, I don't have one, but uh, when this King Ink place opened up at the Mirage, I happened to be walking around just checking it out, and I walked around and saw that like the first week it was open, and I thought oh, that's a really pretty nice place, very clean and brightly lit. And I was like, well, let's go check that out. So we got in the taxi, boop, head over to Mirage, uh, in the back entrance of Mirage, which is a really good place to go. It's right there. King Ink right. is right, it's right there. across the hall from Jet Night Club. Right, so we get there. It's about oh, twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. That sounds about right. And uh, we're like, okay, here we go. Now, the bad part about this that vibe there, I think that's where Jet Night Club is. That you said, right? Right. I mean, just go ahead and yawn it out. Get it out of there. Just get it out. Okay. This um, is what you get when you have the show so late after weekend of partying. All right, so uh, we get in there and it's a bump to get 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 bump. So I'm not a big fan of that. 
And, and it's not just Jet Nightclub. The way this, this uh, King Ink play, work, place works is half of it is this nightclub bar thing, and the other half is the tattoo parlor. Now, when I went in there, the nightclub was there, but there was nobody in there. It was the middle of the day. It was quiet. It was, it was you know, brightly lit tattoo place. But when we got there, it was bump, digga, bump, digga, bump, digga, bump, digga, bump, digga, bump. unbelievably loud. Yeah, and, a, you know, a big line to get in. So we're like, oh, this is, you know, I was like a little worried. I'm like, shit, we brought these guys here, and now we're, what are we going to have to deal? So we talked to, you know, one of the bodyguards and said, hey, we want to go in and get some tattoos. So zippity's up. They put us in the, in the front of the line, and we went right in and didn't have to pay a cover charge. We it was right like $10, and ladies get uh, drink Ten, free. Yeah, free, free for, for the $10, right? I mean, $10 is all you can drink. He, I think that's what he said, $10 and ladies drink free at King Inc. <laughs> <laughs> Sally wrote, uh, they have that, that noise so you don't hear the people screaming when they're getting tattoos. <laughs> well, funny you should say that, Sally. So we went in there, and uh, <laughs> I really like that. And so Shannon was, that's Shannon just saying, okay, I'm going to get a tattoo. And so she was the first person who decided to go. And the guy you see on the right there is the guy, I think, who was running the show, uh, the tattoo parlor at that time of night. I forget his name. Uh, but nice enough guy. And, you know, and everybody there is just completely tatted up. It just You're not going to show her a tattoo, right? I can't show her a tattoo. Okay, good. Because A, I didn't take a picture of it, and B, it's in a it's in a place that you can't take a picture of. Um, and so, you know, she got in there. What I was really impressed with, I don't know if you can see right now, this is, I forget, Billy or Bucky or Junior or whatever his name was. But They're these guys so are nice. all about cleanliness, man. It's unbelievable how clean everything is. So, like, that's the bag they use, or that's the little bottle they use to squirt on you to clean you up. And and they basically bag everything. Yep. Everything. So they're clearly all about, you know, keeping things clean. And when they, you know, that's the table she was on. They, she, he wiped that down with alcohol, alcohol first. And they put the paper thing over on top of that. And that's you can kind of see me in the background taking a picture there a little bit. And uh, and that's that. Now uh, they only allowed Melissa to be in there because her tattoo was in a place where you know it was just inappropriate for me to be in there. Um, and so. Uh, she had her tattoo done and Melissa was in there and I kind of stood guard in front of the, the, the curtained area there so people wouldn't just walk in. Mm -hmm. And uh, meanwhile, Brandon was on the other side talking about his tattoo. And uh, once once uh, Shannon got done, we got to go in and then she showed us the tattoo and it was pretty cool. Uh, it was very cool for her. It had big big meaning for her. Was it an, what's it called? An onk? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and so, I, so we're, she showed us that and she's getting it all ready to go. And uh, then we go looking for Brandon. We can't find Brandon. They're like, well, have you seen Brandon? And Darcy's like, have you seen my husband? I'm like, well, maybe he went to the bathroom. We'll text weird. him. And we couldn't find him. And there's, you know, all, what happened? And we literally, for five, 10 minutes, we couldn't find Brandon. Where is this guy? He can't be out there. Dun, 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 dun. That's not his stuff. He's getting down on the dance floor. And then floor. come to find out, there is a you know, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of tattoo rooms, and he was in this private room off the side that we didn't know exist. I thought there exist. was just the two right, right. there. But there's like there's a lot of them, and he was in the one farthest away from us, deepest in the in the deal. And I'm not sure who discovered him, but we go walking in there, and Brandon's you know right in the middle of it. <laughs> He's you know on his stomach getting a tattoo. We're like, well, look at that. He's back into it. And you can see, again, here's the, you can see the guy with the tattoo, and you can see there's a plastic bag on the cord that goes to the tattoo machine. I mean, these guys are really into cleanliness. Now, what's funny about Brandon, you know, there he is right there getting his tattoo done, and it's a couple shots, and there it is, and, and so on and so forth. But what's funny, this guy is Mr. Healthy Boy. You know, he's he's building freaking cement balls, 175 cement balls, and he's he's Mr. real. Lifty he's guy. a he's CrossFit a strong, trainer. strong, strong, very very good shape guy. Triathlete and triathlete, and I'm like, uh, you know, did it hurt? <laughs> he goes, yes, <laughs> yes, it hurt quite a bit. Actually, well, that's plus, going across all his backbone. Plus, he had a sunburn. <laughs> Yeah, from being in he the did, pool. He did have a sunburn. So he's like, what I tried to do is concentrate on his arm rubbing against my sunburn, <laughs> and that helped me not think about the fact that a needle was poking oh. me a hundred times a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, it did hurt, Scott. It hurt quite a bit. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> so, oh, but ended up, you know, both people were did a great job. Brandon was very happy with his tattoo, and Shannon was very happy with her tattoo. And uh, I thought if I were to get a tattoo, I'd probably go there as well. Well, yeah. And, you know, the thing is, you know, I think getting a tattoo can be a little scary and a little yeah. intimidating, right? For sure. For sure. Especially your first one. And um, both of the, the artists that were working on these guys, I think, did a great job of yep. 
you know, being professional, putting them at ease. I mean, never mind that everything was so clean and, and just uh, very professional. But right. I think that just their demeanor, you know, there was very professional. was calming. Yep. Yeah. I'd, I'd give them an A++. Yeah. Now, you might not want to see a but guy not with their freaking, music. I, oh, that music you know. is. And one of the guys actually said, hey, man, uh, this stuff. I, I think, who was it? Somebody asked did they have aspirin. And and one of the, the guy who who tattooed Shannon was like, oh yeah, I keep aspirin all the time. You listen to this bump 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 all day. You got to have. So he's like, here's some Excedrin, and I've got some Advil. You know, I almost think they should have it just next door to this club. And should there have should have been proof. There should have been a solid wall. Yeah. And they could have been on one side and the nightclub on the other side. That's, that's and sort and of Brandon has returned. It. Uh, we just got done saying, Brennan, that you cried like a little girl. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. He's very, he just said he was very happy with it. He did a great job. Uh, and they did. I, I, would, I could have done without the music. Literally, at the end of the day, well, and, and it happened, by the way, fast. I think, I think uh, Shannon's tattoo was done in about 15 minutes. Brandon, it didn't seem like it took that long. <laughs> Brandon wrote, I cried on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but the music there was so, were, the bass boom, 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 was boom. making like your insides kind of, which isn't, it, you know, isn't good. Maybe if you're 20, that's good. But yeah, that's, so, the, that's the only, go there during the day or something. Yeah, They're so, great guys there though. Yeah, that was the only thing that I didn't like was the, the music was way, way too loud. Hard to concentrate. I piercings there too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, uh, but uh, other than that, they did a good job. If I were going to go, um, <laughs> Brendan said, yeah, the music was distracting, which was good. <laughs> um, so maybe that's part of the plan. But I could imagine working there. Oh, my God. That would be brutal. Can you imagine, can you imagine having brutal. to go to work with a migraine at that place? Oh, man. It was, You'd have to call it, in sick. Yeah, it'd be You rough. know, it was great. Then the we had we got done a little early. We called the limo company, and they came. They were there right early. There. and. A great guy took us back to the to the house. It and, was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was it was really good. So it was a fun evening, and then Sunday we kind of chilled out. We won't go into that. We're already we running over Mexican an hour. Mexican train Dominus. Right, and for that's hours. a whole new show. And uh, it was fun. Full contact Mexican uh, train Dominos. In which choo case, choo. Uh, Sally, who's on the chat room, uh, is yes, toot toot. Sally just wrote, uh, yeah, she's full contact or full contact player as well. And uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. Thank you very much for coming out and playing along again. Uh, great having those those Bay Area folks here. We would like them yes. to come out more often so I can see other people get tattooed. Because I will not be doing that anytime soon. Or will I? Hmm. Anyways, again, thanks everybody for checking us out. If you want to check our listener line, you can call 206-312-0105. Or you can send us an email to onairq at livinginlv.com. Again, onairq at livinginlv.com. By the way, I haven't got a, uh, a photo for our friends in a while. Send your friend's photo to our website. Make us happy. And, of course, your whites will be whiter and your brights will, in fact, be brighter. With that, any last thoughts, my princess? Nope. Have okay. a good week, everyone. If you live in Las Vegas, stay tuned because in a couple, uh, three weeks, we'll be on the radio, which you can't beat that. And with that, ladies and folks, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Credits are happening. Yeah, she's pretty hot. We're still working on him. Jackie, you, I've been watching you guys on the U, on the tube on my TV. Oh, you got your computer hooked up to your TV. I thought you said on YouTube and wasn't sure what you were. Uh, we mentioned that last week. We have a YouTube channel now. So that's kind of fun. We're a partner. We're a YouTube partner. And <laughs> thanks to Jackie. Hell, Ta-da. she knows that. Ta-da. Jackie. Matter of fact, she, she threatened to hurt me bodily because uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do it fast enough or whatever. Because Jackie's like, I'll kick your ass. Anyways.
Thanks, everybody, for uh, playing along. You guys are rock stars, man. Rock star. Rock lobster. All right. I'll tattoo your ass. <laughs> Jackie. Oh, I forgot to stop recording. That was great. All right. See ya.